Hello everyone. So for the past month or so, I've been posting my attempts at digital art. Most of them are done in Paint 3D or Pixlr X, but I figured that if I wanted to make digital art that was actually good, I should probably be using a real drawing program. I wanted to find a program that was free for download and would work on my PC laptop, but there are a lot of options and it seemed pretty overwhelming, especially for a beginner like me, so I thought why not just try out every program and see which one works best. I tested out 8 different programs and ranked them based on how easy they were to use. Some of the finished pictures are better than others, but I'm trying not to rank the programs based on that. So I know that I've used this program quite a bit before, but for the purposes of making illustrations or drawings of people, it's not that great. Of course, there are people who can make amazing art using this program, but for a beginner like me who needs a traditional sketch as a reference, it should probably be saved for things that don't require any real line art. This program does contain an impressive array of brushes, but there's no line stabilization or correction and no way to add layers. Paint3D's real claim to fame is the fact that it can be used to make 3D art. Not only does it have 3D brushes, it has 3D shapes, including 3D people and animals, as well as a full library of 3D models. I myself haven't used these features very often, but if it sounds like something that you would like, it's definitely worth giving the program a try. Uh, the best thing about Paint 3D, and the reason why I started using it, is that if your computer is a PC, it is probably already installed. Autodesk Sketchbook has its own style of controls that I'm sure a lot of people really like, but they're not my thing. For some reason, I got the sense that it was an Apple program. I don't know why, but I felt like I was on an Apple computer while I was using it. The program does seem to have a lot of perspective tools and things to use for your line art, but I didn't really get a chance to explore those. I had an issue with it too because I couldn't use the fill bucket tool on a different layer, so both the line art and the coloring are on the same layer. That's why I didn't do any shading. I guess I could have made a separate layer for the shading, but again, I didn't love the look of the controls and the picture had already taken a long time. This isn't my favorite picture, uh, but I'm not going to blame the program completely for that. I was so tired while I was doing this, and the sketch I was working off of was super blurry for some reason. Also, I've been working on Roswin so much, I'm pretty sure I've forgotten how to draw people with shoes. <laughs> when I heard the name GIMP, I just had to laugh because the name sounds pretty bad. It stands for GNU Image Manipulation Program, I think. I really wanted to rank GIMP higher because it seems to have a lot of great features and brushes, but I had a lot of problems with it. First of all, there, there are so many tools that the interface seems kind of crowded and they're kind of hard to use. I did enjoy the pepper brush though. The biggest problem by far that I had with the program was that the layers were different sizes. On my line art layer, there was a yellow box that I couldn't draw outside of. I tried to get rid of it, but nothing worked, so I ended up just cropping the picture. I don't know exactly how that happened, but I was so frustrated that I was about ready to smash my computer. Then I was also having issues with using the magic wand tool. I don't hear about people using GIMP very often, and when I posted the finished picture on Discord, the first thing someone commented was, I don't believe that you made this in GIMP. Either they were accusing me of plagiarism or GIMP is notorious for being a subpar program like MS Paint. It is much, much better than MS Paint though. <laughs> Also, I've tried to edit out the really long pauses in this video, but it may still seem a little off. My dad and my brother commandeered my computer to listen to power metal while I was in the middle of drawing, so sorry about that. Pixlr X is actually a photo editing program, but I'm ranking it above Paint 3D because you can add layers, and I personally find it easier and more intuitive than Autodesk, Autodesk Sketchbook or, or GIMP. I actually use this for all my photo editing, but since it's not intended for drawing, there's only one brush that you can really use. Of course, you can adjust the size, color, opacity, and softness on it. One warning about the softness, though, is that once you go over, over a certain percentage, it starts to become really weird and bumpy, so I usually stay below 50%. There is also unfortunately no fill bucket tool which can make coloring tedious, tedious and if you switch to the eraser tool, the color of the pen resets and you have to find the color you want all over again. As far as I know, there's no way to change the preset colors. It's doable but it can get a bit annoying after having to reset the pen to black 20 something times. Luckily though, because it's a photo editing program, there are all sorts of filters and effects you can put on your art. Just make sure to merge the layers first, otherwise you'll have to go layer by layer to apply the effect. I wanted to do that with this picture, but I couldn't really find the effect I was looking for. I did, however, use one of the stock photos that come with it for the background. This program also does not require download. In fact, it's online, so you can do it from anywhere. You don't even have to make an account to use it, though I suggest you do because if you haven't made an account, your work won't be saved. If you're in that situation, you can download what you have so far and reopen it in the program later. 
I had actually never heard of Art Weaver before, but I figured that I would give it a try anyway. It does seem like it might be an older program, though I don't know for sure, but the controls were fairly easy to use. I really like that for the Magic Wand tool, there was a deselect button under the select tab in the toolbar. It might not be a huge deal, but it at least felt like it was saving me some clicking. Also, to get the magic wand to work on all layers, I had to click on the magic wand tool and then check all three boxes in the toolbar. Anti, Elias, Contiguous, and Use All Layers. This may not even be the correct way to do it, but it worked for me. Artweaver doesn't have the same canvas rotation feature that some of the other programs have, but you can rotate the canvas 90 degrees or 180 degrees in either direction. I think that the biggest problem I had with it was selecting brushes. Artweaver has quite a few brush options, but none of them were really what I was looking for. Most of them were soft brushes, and I couldn't find a good one for the hair. I think that the picture turned out fine, though. Unfortunately, the file for the video that I recorded got corrupted, so I don't have that video. I don't think that's the fault of the program, though. For some reason, my recording software didn't like Krita, so I wasn't able to record myself using it, but here's the finished product. Uh, sorry about that. Anyway, Krita is a program that a lot of people I know use, so I figured I would give it a try. The program did take a long time to download, which might have been because of all the other drawing programs that I had filling up my computer, but I was pleasantly surprised when I did get it open. It has an amazing number of features, including comic templates, more brushes and textures than you could ever possibly need, and it seems to have some kind of animation software. I didn't do too much experimentation with that, though. Despite this, however, I did have quite a few problems with it. One thing that really stressed me out was that for some reason, every so often a couple layers would randomly delete. Obviously, this was most likely because of my own incompetence and not because of the program, but it hadn't happened in any of the other programs, so it scared me a lot. I also couldn't get the layers back by undoing it or pre pressing Control z and the first time it happened, I had a, almost... <laughs> I almost had a complete mental breakdown because I hadn't saved my work. Thankfully, uh, my computer was brother was able to find the autosave file in my computer's temp folder. I don't actually know where the temp folder is, though, so if you choose to use Krita, do make sure to save your work fre frequently. That goes for any computer files, of course. I don't want to know how much writing I've lost because I forgot to save the file, but I think it's especially important here. I had a bit of trouble with Fire Alpaca at first with the brush lagging, uh, which was a bit annoying, but it seemed to resolve itself after about 20 minutes. Again, this could be attributed to the fact that my computer has so many drawing programs downloaded onto it that it's just slow and glitchy in general. Uh, the controls in Fire Alpaca are fairly easy to use, and much to my relief, I was able to use the magic wand tool even on a different layer. At first, I was a little annoyed with the magic wand because I couldn't get it to select anything no matter what layer I was on, but then I realized that I'd accidentally set the tolerance down to 1. I raised it to about 20 and it worked perfectly after that. The program has a good variety of brushes, not quite as many as Krita, but a lot of the brushes seem like things that I would actually use, like vines, polka dots, and even a Greek key pattern. But the best features in Fire Alpaca are the special Fire Alpaca brushes that will cover your canvas with little alpaca pictures. So much fun. <laughs> The first program I tried using was Medibang Paint Pro, specifically the 64-bit version. To be honest, I have no idea what the 64-bit means, but my brother uh, was always telling me that the higher number is better, so I picked that one. I know Medibang is very popular with anime artists, so I figured that it would be a lot better for my purposes than something like Paint 3D. One thing about Medibang that, while not really an issue, I found annoying was that every time I opened up the program, I would get a couple of pop-ups. Nothing scary or anything, uh, you can just close out of them. The controls on Medibang are not really intuitive, but there are tons of tutorials online to follow. I do suggest watching them before you start. I foolishly jumped straight in and got completely frustrated because there were too many buttons and I didn't know which one to click. The canvas rotation feature was very convenient and there are a good variety of brushes to use. Some of them have weird names though, like Sumi or G-Pen. Maybe some people know what those mean off the top of their head, but I don't, so I recommend just experimenting. Another problem I had right off the bat was that I couldn't figure out how to add color. From the information that I had read about this program, I was under the impression that a 1-bit layer was black and white and was for line art, and an 8-bit layer was for color. Turns out both 1-bit and 8-bit layers are for line art, and you have to add a regular layer with no numbers attached to get color. Altogether though, I really like this program. It works well and has a lot of features, more than I know how to use, and another great thing is that the website seems to have a lot of tutorials. And not just for using the program, but for things like using perspective and making the skin look translucent. I haven't looked at those yet, but there seems to be a lot of information there. 
probably my favorite thing about Medibang is that the magic wand tool works really well. I hope that you enjoyed this and that it was helpful or at least entertaining. Of course, this is just my opinion and ultimately the best art program for you to use is the one that you feel comfortable with. Some people can make great art in MS Paint, so if that's your thing, cool. Good for you, you should absolutely use that program if you like it. I just made this video so that if someone like me who knows virtually nothing about digital art is wondering which program is best to use and doesn't want to download every single free art program out there, they have an overview of a few of them from the perspective of someone who is also just starting out. If there's another drawing program that you like or a program that you want me to test, feel free to comment that below. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and comment. Bye!